Hey everyone, this is Trevor from 3DAnatomyTutorials.com, your source for all things anatomy. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel, 3D Anatomy Tutorials. Just want to take a second to thank 3D4 Medical for providing us with this amazing app, Essential Anatomy. Look for it in the iTunes App Store. Hey everyone, welcome to another 3D Anatomy Tutorial. I'm really excited today. We're going to be talking about the axillary artery. And we're going to be talking about its six major branches, as well as a few other small branches off the axillary artery. So I've drawn some lines here, and what I'm trying to show you is where the axilla axillary artery begins. It starts right after the first rib, and where it ends, right after Terry's major muscle, which is right there. That's Terry major's muscle. All right, so that's the axillary artery. Let's select it. That's the easy part. The tough part a lot of times can be remembering the six little branches that come off the axillary artery. Luckily, there's a really great mnemonic device called Hotel Spa. H in hotel stands for highest thoracic artery, which is right there, highest thoracic artery. O doesn't stand for anything, so I'll put it in white. I'm gonna capitalize the T here because it does stand for something. The T in hotel stands for thoracoacromial trunk artery. Now you might have learned that thoracoacromial trunk, you might have learned thoracoacromial artery, and some people learn thoracoacromial trunk artery. So however, however you were taught, I think thoracoacromial artery is fine, but make sure make sure that's okay with your professors. All right, the E again doesn't stand for anything, but the L stands for lateral thoracic artery, lateral thoracic artery. So here it is on the lateral side of the thorax, lateral thoracic artery. In baby blue, we have the subscapular artery. Now, of the six branches of the axillary artery, this is really the only one that's pointing straight posteriorly, so we can't really see it from this view. It's back here. We'll turn the camera in a bit so you can see that. But S stands for subscapular artery. That's the S in hotel spa. In red here, we have the posterior humeral circumflex artery. Posterior humeral circumflex artery. Here it is. It's moving around the posterior side of the humeral neck and wrapping around, which is why it's called the posterior humeral circumflex artery. Now in this greenish color, we have the anterior humeral circumflex artery. That's gonna move around the front of the humeral neck and anastomose or connect to the posterior humeral circumflex artery. So those two arteries wrap around the humeral neck and supply that region with blood. So, not too bad, right? Only six branches. It looks kind of confusing at first, but when you go in order of the hotel spa, you can see that they they leave, they exit the artery in this order, H-T-L-S-P-A. So we start with highest thoracic artery right there. That's the first branch off of the axillary artery. Then we have this tree trunk looking structure called the thoracoacromial trunk artery that has four branches of its own, like branches on a tree, which we'll talk about next. Then we have the lateral thoracic artery in pink here, moving down the lateral side of the thorax. And then the subscapular artery we'll turn around and look at in a second, but it's moving posteriorly to supply some muscles of the back with blood. Then we have the posterior and anterior humeral circumflex arteries. Now in the body, uh, another tip to tell these apart is that the posterior humeral circumflex artery is usually a little bit thicker than the anterior humeral circumflex artery. And normally they exit really close together and then they wrap around the humeral neck. Uh, sometimes they actually even exit as one structure which then splits into two, but that's not textbook and hopefully, hopefully you're not being tested on that. And most cadavers you see will see a posterior humeral circumflex artery and a separate anterior humeral circumflex artery that wrap around the humeral neck. So let's check some of those things out. Here we can now see the subscapular artery right here. So that's the S in hotel spa. It has two branches of its own. Let's change the view and look at those branches. 
Here we are. So here is the subscapular artery with two branches. The scapular circumflex artery in green, which wraps around the neck of the humerus and supplies the infraspinatus and supraspinatus and other muscles with blood. And then we can barely see the top of it, the thoracodorsal artery. The thoracodorsal artery is going to move inferiorly and supply the latissimus dorsi muscle with blood. So again, in baby blue, subscapular artery, that's the S in hotel spa. And then its two branches are in green, the scapular circumflex artery, and in yellow, the thoracodorsal artery. And here we can see something pretty cool right here. Here's the anterior humeral circumflex artery, the A in hotel spa. And here's the posterior humeral circumflex artery, the P in hotel spa, wrapping around the neck of the humerus to supply it with blood. All right, let's look at the branches of the T in hotel spa, the thoracoacromial trunk artery. Oh, and here they say thoracoacromial artery trunk. So there's all different kinds of ways to say it. Let's get our pen and label this trunk blue. This again is the T in hotel spa, thoracoacromial trunk artery. And it, like a tree trunk, has branches. Now, there's a mnemonic device for these branches. And I think it's really helpful. It's all. The A here stands for acromial. Dogs. The D stands for deltoid. Can. All right, what can all dogs do? All dogs can. The C stands for clavicular. All dogs can pee. All right, so let's label some of those. Again, the A in all stands for the acromial branch, which is right here heading towards the acromion of the scapula. And it has lots of little branches that aren't named. Um, again, so here, heading towards the acromion, acromial branch of the thoracoacromial trunk artery. Here, a much bigger branch, we have the deltoid branch heading towards the deltoid region. So that's the D in dogs, all dogs. Uh, in baby blue, we have the clavicular branch, which heads towards the clavicle, which we've removed, but the clavicle would be running across right here. And what's usually the biggest branch is the pectoral branch. So the deltoid and the pectoral branch are usually the bigger two, and the clavicular and the acromial are a little bit smaller. So there we go. All dogs can pee. A for acromial, right here. Acromial branch. D for deltoid branch, C for clavicular branch, and P for pectoral branch. All dogs can pee. Not too bad, right? All right. So that's the axillary artery. Now, when you look at it here, it looks pretty intimidating, but if you use our two mnemonic devices, Hotel Spa, to find the six branches of the axillary artery, and if you use the mnemonic device, all dogs can pee for the four branches of the thoracochromial trunk. And if you can just remember that the subscapular artery has two branches of its own, the scapular circumflex artery and the thoracodorsal artery, you'll have no problem acing the axillary artery. Again, a recap, axillary artery starts after the first rib and ends after Terry's major. It has six main branches, which Hotel Spa stands for, highest thoracic, thoracochromial trunk, lateral thoracic, subscapular artery, which is tough to see back behind this line, posterior humeral circumflex artery, and anterior humeral circumflex artery. All right, guys, if you have any questions, just leave us a comment and we'll get back to you right away. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be talking about the branches of the brachial artery. See you soon.